So you you read I know you read the the Andrew Huberman piece um yeah. in New York magazine because I I I know that you podcasted on it. Um but I didn't get through the whole podcast. So tell me what your reaction to that piece was. I mean that I I I had a reaction and my reaction was very different from the reactions <laughs> of most people online in terms of the kinds of people that I follow, you know, like I think that once I was like, you know, reading through his comments on some of his his Instagram posts, he obviously has like scheduled posts so the posts would come up and they would have nothing to do with his dating life and people would start talking to him about it in the comments anyway and there there were obviously some women who had these visceral reactions or were super critical, but those are not apparently the kinds of people that I follow online because the, the, <laughs> what I was seeing was like not how I felt at all. But I was, I'm curious to know what you felt about that piece. I mean, I'm very cynical about um, people who are able to command very large audiences. Um, mm. I obviously don't think this is always the case. I command a pretty large, I mean, not, not an Andrew Huberman large audience, but I think I've like I'm sort of passed the threshold of like, you know, people might be cynical about me. Um, but I, it takes a certain personality type to get to his level. And I feel like that was sort of missed in the criticism of him. Like, it, and I'm not saying like, oh, well, he's a podcast science bro. It's like, well, like look at every component of his life. You know, he's a Stanford professor. He's a like infotainer, really, you know, it, you need to be very like political to get to that level of success and to maintain it for as long as he's maintained it. Um, and so like that alone, it's like, well, you know, not it's, again, like not every celebrity or micro celebrity is a bad person, obviously. Right. But like, you know, there's a certain Machiavellian <laughs> personality type who finds it much easier to succeed, um, you know, it, it's like where he lives, what he's doing, what he's producing, how he's producing it, um, how he's packaging it. it, it and it was, it's like all this sort of like meta, almost kind of boring stuff I felt was like kind of cut out, right? It's like, and again, it's like not because he's like a masculinity influencer, basically. It's like what, <laughs> it's like how successful is he? What do you actually need to to do to maintain that kind of success. And it, you have to be able to compartmentalize in the way he clearly did to be dating, what was it, like six women? Yeah, that we know of. <laughs> right. But, yeah, I'm assuming there were more than that. Right. Yeah, I I mean, I, I share your skepticism because I think for most, not all, again, <laughs> like you say, um, there has to be a certain level of narcissism too, because I think that primarily, like I, I subscribe to his podcast and so I listen to parts of it sometimes that I don't, I've never found it super compelling. So I haven't listened that much and I probably haven't even gotten through an entire episode, but you know, I followed him and, and I know that a lot of men that I know find the information that he offers very helpful and useful and find him very inspiring um, but I think, you know, like I've never felt particularly comfortable speaking at an audience. Um, I like doing interviews and I like having conversations and, you know, like I do talks, but I usually try to keep the talk as short as possible. And then, you know, I enjoy the Q and A, like I sort of feel uncomfortable with that kind of thing, which is not to say I have no ego because you know, you have to, like, right. you have to, if you're going to be like a writer and a speaker and all these things and to put yourself out there and ask people to pay attention to what you're saying. But, uh, you know, he just kind of talks and talks and talks uh, for an hour. So that <laughs> sort of in and of itself, I find slightly narcissistic, but um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I, I like, I liked the piece. I first of all found it very interesting and I love gossip. So I've really enjoyed reading about somebody else's <laughs> dating life. And I found it really stupid that all these people in line were pretending as though they didn't enjoy that. I'm like, what? everybody likes gossip. Was crazy Stop to lying. Me. That was so crazy. What was really crazy to me is I saw someone who at least like used to work for the New York Post. I don't know what they're doing now. You're like, oh, is this what the press has turned into? And I'm like, <laughs> 
you like you got your start at the New York Post. You know people love this stuff. Like I'm sure I don't I don't know what they're what they've written, but like I like this isn't this isn't the new component of this, right? Like this isn't the open question. Um and as for as long as like these profiles have been a thing, they've been like sort of salacious. That's why people hate journalists, right? Like <laughs> because they're digging into your business and everyone loves it, right? Um it's I mean the question is like you know, who's worthy of these kinds of profiles? Like, you know, who is an influencer now? And it's like, it's really difficult to tell, like what audience size makes you a celebrity? It's because everyone's sort of a celebrity right now. Right. Yeah. I mean, I just, you, you know, gossip is like, it's so human, you know, for as long as humans have existed, humans have loved gossip. And before there were newspapers, there, it was just gossip. Like what was reported in the newspaper was essentially just gossip, like people talking to other people about what's going on in the town or whatever. Um, and this kind of higher than thou, like I would never stoop this low. I feel like either, either it's a lie or that you're actually some kind of sociopath because you know, like how could you not be interested in the lives of other people? The lives of other people are, you know, among the most interesting things in life, in my opinion. Me too. I mean, and it, all, all of this is coming from, of course, like people who spend 14 hours a day on Twitter, like <laughs> you kind of kid, just like, you know, I mean, I think it has more integrity if you just say, I like this guy. And I don't like the way it was written. You know, like, I, like it's yeah. less, maybe it's less compelling as an argument. But I right. think there's like, at, at a certain point, I just wish people were like honest on Twitter. Like, you know, always contriving these reasons why things are unethical. Just say like, you know, fuck these people. Like that's to me, like, <laughs> just be real. Like we, you don't need to like make up an essay about like why. Yeah, exactly. Like, I don't like it. Or I do like this guy and I don't want you to say mean things about him. <laughs> Yeah, like, you know, uh, hey, that girl's my friend is, like, <laughs> good enough for me. Totally. Yeah. <laughs> I, yeah, I mean, I guess, and, you know, beyond that, when I read it, I mean, I don't know. I don't know the guy. We can't, I can't say for sure I know that any of this is even true. On a certain level, you do have to trust a reporter and trust that they did their job properly and that they're not just reporting outright lies and because there was so many women who were sharing these stories it's not just based on the narrative of one you know embittered ex as 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 many online sort of wrote those women off as you know like we're just listening to these like bitter exes who got cheated on or dumped or didn't get what they wanted or whatever um you know i i read it and i was like this guy sounds like at very least a narcissist and you know he sounds a bit like a psychopath to me and i don't mean that to say like he's a serial killer i just mean those are psychopathic traits to be able to engage in that level of double i say double life but you know times six or whatever it was and to be that over years and years and years constantly lying and kind of racing around to maintain all these lies and that that wouldn't stress you out, but that you would kind of get off on it. like Right, and there's so much of it. I mean, the, the one thing that to me like made it sort of like next level was the woman who was doing fertility treatment. Yeah. That, that like that, because that's such a stressful, and that's, a, that's a, you need, a, that, and that's not like a one person journey either, right? Like it doesn't, you don't, obviously you don't have to pursue with a partner, but like, it's your mom or like a friend or something like there's there's a lot of work and like physical it's physically taxing mm -hmm. so that that to me was like the one thing where actually like you know if, if we're getting like seriously into like is this news or not you know that's like that is the one part where i was like this is really more than gossip like even the detail about hpv it's like well you know hpv is not a classic std there's you know I'm, i won't open it in a worms but like IVF is so involved that like that's that's fucked up to like allow that to happen. Yeah, I agree. Like that's pretty serious. And so to me, I, I guess, yeah, it's so much of what I saw online was people snarking and, you know, people defensive of him and that they were concerned about cancel culture as if this were some kind of Me Too moment and New York Magazine and all these bitter women are trying to take him down and destroy his life. And as soon as that piece came out, 
And then as soon as I saw the reaction, it was like, that's not what's happening. And that's not what's going to happen. I don't think he's at any risk at all of losing his career or his fan base. And in fact, his fans seemed to think it was really cool. Like they were like, oh, yeah. our football star heroes <laughs> banging in all these chicks and getting away with it. I mean, how many people who like who were really angry about it do you think even committed to reading the piece? Yeah. I, Instead I know. of like reacting to the uh to the reaction, which is like another weird thing about these articles is like, I don't think even when articles are kind of celebrated, um, they're like I've noticed they're like getting longer than they once were, you know, whether it's like a Substack article or like something in a magazine, they're always like these tomes and I'm like, I feel like three people read them, <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. and then everyone else is just sort of like, it's just like, like reaction ping pong. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, well, you probably know that as a writer, that that's true of most of what, I mean, I think that's true of most of what I write. Like, I think that most people who are reacting to what I write online, especially if they're saying they don't like it, didn't read it and you can kind of tell because they're just, you know, they're reacting to the headline or whatever it is that they think that you believe. Whereas, you know, they clearly haven't read your very complex nuanced article, like a uh, um, article and, 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 and they're not understanding that your view isn't black and white and, and all of that. But yeah, I did. I got that impression for sure. I think, I mean, some people online literally did say, I'm not reading this article because I don't want to give it clicks, but I think it's terrible. <laughs> okay, well, you just look like a dumb dumb. Um, and then, you know, yeah, other people who were just immediately so defensive of him and so angry at the Me Too movement and relating those two things that they just didn't even want to engage with whatever it is in the article and just wanted to be defensive of this guy who they they determined was, you know, too powerful. So the the mainstream media is trying to take him down. I think I saw Eric Weinstein saying that, you know, this is like implying that this was some kind of like FBI plot to sully his image. And I'm like, I don't think the FBI cares that's, about Andrew yeah. Huberman. <laughs> that's off the rails. I mean, like, you know, I'll, I'll, I, the, things like this do happen, right? Where there's like, you know, like rival ideologies and, you know, different publications and but it's I don't think this is what that that was right like I don't think this is some like uh, conspiracy to take down uh, you know the alt nutrition industrial complex or whatever <laughs> like, 